Greetings and welcome. Have a great day. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you for joining. We're here on a on a Wednesday. Just hanging out, doing the mod thing. So yeah, jumping right into it. TR music. Kind of just been my uh my chill routine the past couple of weeks now, frankly. So yeah. Also throw uh, uh, Skywind OST into the mix, and I highly advise you check it out. Check, check, sound, check. How am I doing out there? <clears throat> ah, yes. This is the thing I think I'm going to start doing. Non Morrowind thing. If I can get the right window open. Today's non Morrowind thing would be, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Final Fantasy IV Ultima. I would say this is probably, if you never played Final Fantasy IV or two, definitely, you know, don't jump into this. But if you have, if you're like me and you've played it almost Morrowind levels of times, uh, you know, this is worth checking out for sure. This is like the total overhaul of uh, <laughs> FF4. So yeah, highly recommend it. FF4 Ultima. Yo, yo, bro. It's Catastrophe. Thanks for joining, my friend. Yeah, uh, so already got started today with the mloxify of the website load order, and that is opened here and pending review. Wanted to squeeze a few more things in real quick uh, before we merged and deployed that, so we'll get on to that in a sec. Um, I feel like in the user's guide somewhere it should say, you know, you're going to have to use command line stuff. <laughs> get mentally prepared for that <clears throat> do you have some bg music playing too yes i do it should be very quiet can you hear it yeah okay thank you nice touch <clears throat> i appreciate it it's actually um thank you very appropriate yeah it's actually if you look here at my uh <clears throat> at my emacs it's the tamriel rebuilt soundtrack um, which Tamriel Rebuilt is uh, a very large mod for Morrowind. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, you know, <clears throat> of course I enjoy this mod, Tamriel Rebuilt, and the music is outstanding, you know, uh, ASCII and, and rightly. So yeah, thank you for noticing that. And uh, and I think it fits, yeah, you know, kind of like a chill background to uh, just the Morrowind hacking that we do here. So yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, command line usage, I don't know. Um, I don't know exactly how to express that, but I feel like somewhere... Uh, we'll open up this one here. Somewhere right here. I feel like there should be a... Stuff you ought to know section. Maybe. I don't know. I really got to sit on that idea, but... It's, it's a thought I had while I was working on some other stuff, you know. Because um, I do hear from people somewhat frequently who have a hard time with Delta plug-in or this or the other thing. Anyways, though, um, let's jump into this one. New Starfields, new usage. Indeed. Cool, okay. And I actually have this one over here. Quite a few different options now. Um, so it's worth uh, updating what we got here. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely old. So, so yeah, let's just go take a look at what's actually at the mod now. MD up updated it to be kind of on its own. Let's go ahead and do that. It's long overdue. Cool, okay.
Hudrax, hey, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Shotgun stream, yeah. I figured, you know, uh, I wanted to do it anyways, and it's just a, it's a windy, rainy day right now, so couldn't really do anything outside I had planned anyway. So yeah, I'm glad you made it. Thank you for being here. Um, just going through right now, uh, just to go back to the list real quick, just, um, I did an early morning Mloxify of the load order, um, kind of with my coffee. I got up early and did my workout and everything early today. Um, and I, I ran the load order of the website through Mlox, got that all pushed up there, and we've got a pending uh, merge request here. We're going to have a couple other changes go into it. But yeah, so so far that's what we've done. We've we've sorted the website plugins. Um, uh, yeah, you're supposed to get that ran up there. Yeah, all right. It's good. We've needed it. I can see right now my lawn is like so much happier, you know. So I didn't get a mow in yesterday because I was a slacker, but... Once it's done raining in like two days, it'll be a foot tall. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyways, now i am just uh, gotten a few emails and people have reached out to me about the new uh, kind of setup here for this one. So honestly, just one of my favorite mods too, I should say, because it's like, it's in terms of bang for your buck, you know, like you plop some new textures in and it's like every night now you have amazing looking stars, you know, just... And, and different opacity levels, right? So if you think they're... A little intense, you know. Um, personally, I go for the one hundred percent. That's just how I roll. But that's the beauty of this. Like everything has options. Every single one has different opacity levels. I forget which one I use. I want to say it's this one, but we'll see when I get to my uh, config. Hey, Fane. Hey, yeah. Wednesday stream. That's right. Just a shotgun stream today. I'm glad you're here. Welcome, and uh, thank you for your uh, speechcraft and uh, pickpocket mods. By the way. Very, very much needed uh, fresh take on those. So, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, it's Catastrophe. I mean, that's like I said, you know, it's Catastrophe says, that's really pretty. And, I mean, I got to say, bang for your buck, right? Don't go that way. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for uh, being in the chat. And use a dragon shout, they say. Um, boost. That's my favorite one. <laughs> So, yeah, just want to gawk at these a little bit before we go actually put it to paper on the website. All right. This guy is, yeah, okay. I was just doing this a minute ago. So, let's do a uh, folder paths. And so, let's see here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, option seven. I'll hop in the game and actually demonstrate that too. Yeah, okay, cool. Got it in here already. Nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to have... You need the core file, I think, for the mesh. Yeah. Um, and then the various options simply have a texture of different opacity levels. Um, again, I say, you know, go all the way. Go for 100, and let's just see what that looks like right here. Looks right. All right, so I'm going to spawn in at daytime, which is actually good. Ooh, very busy journal. Let's turn the game down a little bit. All right, woof. Whoa, 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 whoa. Too fast. Starry night. So this is number seven. And yeah, this is just the one that I used. And this is 100%. And this is just the one I've used since forever, you know, since I've been using this mod. But, um, you know, you can very easily just, like, swap in a different number here. Number four. I don't know. Just for fun. Let's look at a different one. No, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Don't try this at home. I fat fingered myself out of the game. That's basically what happened. There we go. Whew. Risky business. And number two. 
number four. A little bit less of a color explosion, but still, I think, an improvement over vanilla. This one's more of a just stars. Like what I might see if I looked outside with less light pollution going on. Very nice. Okay. So, you know, I'm not going to be able to, like, tell people exactly what to use. So, we'll just say here, you know, I use number seven. Um, right? Number seven? Yeah, I use number seven. Uh, it's easy to try them all. Number seven at 100% opacity, but, you know, um, it's easy to try them all. So, do, right? Do try them all. Um, so, yeah. Just going to put that one in there. All right. Um... Excuse me. The folder path shown is just a suggestion. You're encouraged. To try several of them out and find the one that you like best. Now, I reckon if you've got like a mod manager that will uh, have like a GUI for the Bane options, uh, there's pictures in there. Um, and you, they could probably see them in there, so you wouldn't need to go in-game. I still think it's probably nice to go in-game uh, and get an idea. The picture doesn't quite do it justice. Nonetheless, though, that's something that's an advantage, you know, if you've got uh, MO2 or Rybash or something like that. Um, I distinctly remember seeing stuff like that for Fallout and whatever, back when I used to try to use MO2 for that. All right, I think this is a... Uh, looks good to me. Eh. Okay, uh, let's see the change log real quick, though. All right. Yeah, we got a new... Okay. 5.8 today. Uh, I kind of jumped into the work before I finished the to-do list, but I want to say that I took a look at uh, Zach Has a Cat, better known as the resident Lua wizard of our time. Uh, has a new approach on the distant buildings concept using Lua so it requires 0 0.49 and just to kind of quick preview of it you know it's awesome uh tested it out just before the stream and uh you know it basically worked perfectly with total overhaul so be able to replace the not only will we be able to replace the script based approach but like this is basically compatible with everything and it goes back to what I've said before on the stream, you know, uh, one of the advantages of using Lua, you know, um, I had somebody say, well, why would you use Lua when Morrowind script works just fine? And, uh, I mean, yeah, that's a valid thing to say. Uh, and that's a reason, right? It's compatible with everything, out of the box. What more can you ask for, really? <laughs> so, that's great. That's really, really great. Because I was not looking forward to... Uh, you know, building up Averis Legacy, for example, has almost 700 statics that are handled at various points of the quest. Um, as you, If you've ever played that mod before, if you have not and you don't want spoilers, maybe just plug your ears for like 30 seconds. Spoiler alert. But, um, you know, you build up uh, Taliverith into like a city. But it has many different phases and it takes a while, um, you know. And so it would be really tricky to do that with just Morrowind script. But... With the Lua approach, and I didn't actually look at the code yet, but, uh, you know, it should be just a lot simpler. We won't have to do kind of funky things like placing invisible activators uh, near the player and all kinds of other hacky stuff that we had to do. You know, I did a few of them myself. They work. Generally are small, depending on the number of changes you have to make, but oof, it's very exciting to have a Lua way. So anyway, end rant. That looked really, it looked really good. Um, and I'm looking forward to switching over to that. New ins 
installation options. Uh, oh, you know what though? Let's see here. Graphics overhaul, one day modernize. Let's add those in here. And then crunch the database. There we go. Okay, uh, yeah, so back to the to-do list. Uh, working on this, JFK merged. We're gonna put that into 5.8. We're gonna replace the uh, Justice for Cartag OAAB shipwrecks plugin with this one. Somebody, a few people have uh, reached out to me and let me know that the new Spells Reforged actually is not, the SR5 option actually is not compatible with OpenMW anymore for uh, mesh compatibility reasons, so we gotta remove that. The workaround is to use the older version, so maybe we can note that. Um, one day modernize list instructions need to be added to multiple teleport marking. And I should note too that the TR stuff is definitely outdated too. Uh, this is not something I'm keen to patch just because it's about as tedious as you can get to patch and we're so close to Lua magic that, you know, uh, we'll be way better off to make a Lua multi-mark spell that will just be automatically compatible with everything. Uh, Starwind Enhance, Galaxy Map Overhaul is no longer separate. It's in there, so we gotta remove that as an option. Um, already talked about that. Very hype, very cool. Uh, props to Zach, as always, and thank you for sharing that with everybody. Um, and then, yeah, we will end the stream by going back to the 6.x lineup assembly, which we left off at, uh, I would say, roughly 20% through the list. Um, and I've actually added some things since then, too. So, yeah, all right. And I wanted thoughts from people about uh, kind of a shower thought I had here where maybe it would be good in the user's guide. You know, so somewhere on this page. Should we have like a things you need to know kind of a section, you know, just so get people prepared for the fact that they're going to have, have to use command line for Delta plugin and things like that. We're going to add the light fixes thing by Waza Bear. That's command line, you know, so going to need to be prepared for that. Oh, hey, Zach. Welcome, my friend. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Uh, Lua Multimark can be done already. Just has to be done. Oh, in that case, I mean, I know what I'm doing with the rest of my day. Um, <laughs> uh, I looked at this, but I don't quite grok the um, magic API yet, so I might hit you up, Zach. Because, um, yeah, that's like must have for me and if we could nuke the multi mark mod off lists with that would be you know just chef kiss so yeah props and thanks for hopping on man glad you're here um and so yeah just going back to this wanted feedback if anybody had any ideas uh who Drax looks like you said oh yes for sure um cool so maybe we can piece that together um i just wanted to plant the seeds of that right now maybe we could piece that together later on but uh yeah because i got an email thread going with somebody um who's having trouble with Delta plugin, troubleshooting it and stuff. And so I just wonder if there isn't something we can do. Hudrex, at least a basic DIY guide with survival console commands to fix things on the fly, especially with Zach Utils, which is a game changer in terms of simplicity. Yeah, heck yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think that warrants its own section, right? Like troubleshooting stuff in game. Um, things you need to know, right? Is what I said earlier. Things you need to know, not just like how to use command line stuff like Delta plugin, but also like, oh, uh, I see something nasty in game, you know, how can I find out about it so I can report it to somebody and then maybe just kind of take the liberty of fixing it by disabling it in the console or whatever. Good call out, Herdrex. So yeah, we can come back to that later and put this together. Um, let's see though. Did I, did I do, oh my goodness. All right. Hudrex, I'll start gathering some of those for the guide. Awesome. Thank you so much. And two, I just wanted to note too, another shower thought I had was before this weekend, I'm going to put the chat into the video output. I have to because uh, as much as I like reading y'all's comments and stuff, uh, it would just be better for people watching after the fact, you know, to be kind of seeing it all. And plus the chatter you guys have that I'm not reading out loud is sometimes very good. All right. Uh, let's look at what I've done here. Last updated. That'd be today. All right. 
Large number of choices. <laughs> yeah, okay. Props, MD. We love you. All right, let's go to the change log. For the mod list. Updated. Now has new installation options. Okay. Looks good. We don't have an issue on GitLab for this, I don't think. Let's take a quick peek here. Oh, yeah, Simon Prime. I got to get back to this guy. That was really interesting. As a kind of a side note, we heard from this fellow who appears to be kind of an old-timer. Big Rybash user. And, uh, you know, I I use Rye Mash and Rye Flash for Oblivion and Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas and stuff. Never really got into using it for Morrowind, so I'm kind of um, looking forward to learning a little bit more about it. But it's going to have to wait until the weekend for sure. So um, I appreciate all the information that they brought to the table, though. And looking forward to, you know, bringing more information for people. Because certainly, you know, we want to have as many choices documented for people as we can. Where it makes sense, right? We're not the Rye Bash guide. We're not the MO2 guide. We're just the modding open MW guide. Okay. Um. All right. All right. I'm gonna check that one off. I already checked it off. JFK merged. Okay. Yeah. Let's see here. Apparently, I just haven't looked at the mod page for JFK in a while. Apparently, the author has linked to this in the comments. Uh, but Johannes, our friend from Discord, was kind enough to link this to me a while back. And uh, it was previously a 6.x change marked for that, but I figure, you know, let's get that in there because it's, a, it's relevant to right now. So we're going to jump the gun on this one a little bit, put it in there. We're going to swap out these two. So what happens is we swap out these two. We swap in this one at the point where uh, I think this one goes because this one loaded later. Loaded later. Um, so yeah, let's do that. And the question is, where did I have this cataloged in my own collection? Uh, merged plugin. Here we go. I put it under patches. Okay, I guess that works. I always say this, but I struggle, man, sometimes with naming these categories. And I don't know, I mean, it's a patch, but it's also the complete <laughs> content of these two mods, you know? So is it really just a patch? Not going to overthink it. All right. Nonetheless, going to put it into the patches category on the website. And I would accept the patch to change it to a more logical category at a later date. Thank you, FFan 1998. Good looking out. I actually never noticed that it looked awkward, but I mean, you know, they pointed out here and then it's kind of just one of those once you see it, you cannot unsee it things, you know. Um, I'm guilty of not having flown down there too recently. 24. This time's kind of flying by today. All right. Um, hmm. I'm just going to use the author's own description right here. And uh, this did not have any. No, it did not. I do not believe any special instructions are needed for this. It's pretty installation-wise and usage-wise. It's pretty, you know, pretty run-of-the-mill. So, um, and anything important. You know, such as such as replacing the other two. I think it's implicit here. I don't know. I'm not going to mention it. Just clutter the page. 
Maybe I'll regret that. There we go. Uh huh. Okay. Got to look to my own configuration here. Where did I put it? Merge. Yeah, right after JFK. to the mod lists. Uh, let's take a look, actually. There we go. Okay, just those two. ourselves a nice little diff here. We'll put the change log in. We're going to remove first and then add. Without getting into the details exactly here, it's... Yeah, okay, I'll say it. Can't hurt. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, okay. That's not cluttering it up. Have a link to the new one there. Ooh, something's not right, though. Hold up. <laughs> Unbalanced. Ah, there we go. Good old rainbow parens. Emacs mod. It's my second favorite engine to mod. Modding Emacs. One of these days, this stream is going to turn into modding Emacs. I hope you all are ready for that. We're just going to forget about OpenMW. And just mod Emacs. All right, let's take a look at this. <laughs> you're ready? I don't know if you're ready, man. <laughs> it's catastrophe says I'm ready. I don't know if you're ready. I saw a video of like these guys that make fun of programming tropes, and they and they made fun of Emacs, and they like pulled up the fireplace, and I felt a little self conscious because. I do that. I do the fireplace. <laughs> and just for posterity, I'm going to do it right now. Hmm? This is how we get the real work done, okay? 
Okay. Oh, enough nonsense. I did something bad here. F string single is not allowed. Oh, oops. Oh, I see. There we go. I love typoing. Don't you? It's the best, and it never makes me waste time. Okay. Yeah, so this is going to cover JFK Merge. We'll take that off. Um, ooh, I'm excited to implement Multimark Spell. That's exciting. That takes basically care of these. I'm, I mean, I suppose it wouldn't be doable with 0 0.48, eh, Zach? Or am I not being creative enough? Because I didn't think that uncapping was possible with 0 0.48, and we have that. We actually have uncapping. Somebody did it in a very creative way. That works. So. Come on. There we go. Knocked it off. Good, good. Cool. Zach says, I'm not super familiar with what's in 0 0.48. If it has teleport, it should be possible. You will need, you will have to do some hacks though. We have teleport, but I think it's janky in some ways. I would rather not compromise, honestly. I'm our, personally, I've already made the jump to 0 0.49, but it's easy for me to do that. You know, I've always been a living on the edge kind of a, dev build user so no fear including having unexpected bugs that's how we roll all right jfk merged done put it all in there right Right. Spells reforged. Move. Remove SR5. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now let me just take a quick look at this email here. Damage health not working. So I wonder if it's a 0 0.49 thing. Um, let's take a look at it. Let's open this up right here. What do I say? One, three, five. One, three, five. Okay. Yeah, I think the, um, rather than tell people to use the old one, I'm just going to tell people not to use it. 
And then once we get whatever NIF magic is required, or whatever NIF magic is required is fixed, you know, we can, uh... We can re-add that. I know Capo's doing, like, tons of work right now on New Vegas-related stuff. To make New Vegas, you know, openable in the game. Um, maybe by this weekend, we can try it out in the stream. We can walk around as... You know, startup test character in the in the Mojave. Just check it out. Or the Capital Wasteland, I don't know. It seems like Capo is focusing on New Vegas though. Exciting stuff though. Oh, as I've said before a couple of times, New Vegas, my probably next favorite Bethesda game, even though it's not really made by them, I get it. Uh, just two on this one, okay. Um, what did I, what is the name of the thing I deleted here. SR5. I'll have to look into that more. I'm always curious when there's things that go from green to red, like, what is the actual issue? Do we have an issue on GitLab? Does the OpenMW team, you know, even know about this? I find that sometimes it's the case they don't, you know, and so it could be helpful to the project to do kind of the research and put together like a, you know, a trouble report so that somebody can fix it who's aware, you know, so. All right. Mm, I think really that's all it's necessary. I don't even really think I'm going to check it just yet. All right. Okay, yeah, we, so I will handle this because it will be <laughs> probably a while since the teleporting mod will be 0 0.49 only. It'll be a minute before we actually put it on the mod lists proper. A um, lot of people don't like using, you know, I even today I'm speaking with people who are hesitant to use 0 0.48 because it's not released yet, even though it's been in RC for over a year, you know. We're close to a year, not RC for a year, but it's been, you know, people have been RC for a long time, probably close to a year. And testing for much longer than that, you know. So it's had so many eyeballs on it. It's like as stable as it's going to get. But because it's not released, people are understandably hesitant to jump onto it. So, um, yeah, it'll be a minute before we put all these 0 0.49 goodies on the lists, unfortunately. But, man, I can't wait till we have Ashlander Architect on there. Uh, and maybe we'll look at that one this weekend. I was talking offline about that with her, Drax. And I thought, yeah, it would be pretty cool to... <laughs> we could use Ashlander Architect to fix mod incompatibilities even <laughs> go on like a bug hunt uh and do that so okay enough enough chat let's do the fixing nice her drag trying to, says trying to do that right now for the stream as a surprise awesome i'm so glad to hear that multiple teleport marking Okay, so the issue here is that people using the one-day modernization list are going to get confused, potentially, because I'm not really telling them. And I think I can suffice to just do this. Ooh, that was a heck of a typo. <laughs> 
we skip if following. One, one day. It'll be the next level of bug fixing, really, like interactive QA. <laughs> that the day for that will be when we can do like I think G7 has something for MWSC where you can like copy paste chunks of a scene and like export it out as a NIF. Um, you know that's some of the most amazing crap I've ever seen. I don't know if OpenMW will ever do that, just because it's like treading into um, territory that the API doesn't currently go. Such as writing files out. Ashlander Architect has a major update coming. Its repo is up to date, but there are a few bugs I need to fix before releasing it, Zach says. Awesome. The release version is broken anyways in latest 0 0.49. Okay, that explains why it was broken for me because it's actually broken. It wasn't that I was doing it wrong. I checked it out a few weeks ago on my stream though um, and it was just not really coming together. So awesome. Well, maybe I'll like get pull and we'll check it out, you know? Yeah, awesome, totally awesome. All right, skip it following the one day modernization mod list. Boom, right there. I think that's should solve the problem for people. Uh, oh, you know what? Gonna head and go ahead and oh it's man, hard to believe it's been three years since I touched this one. What have I been doing all this time? Playing Morrowind. Sometimes playing New Vegas. And I got a Final Fantasy VI playthrough in there somewhere. <laughs> Forty-two. Okay. Changes to the rotation API. Oh yeah, I think I recall that. Cool. Hmm. All right. And I'm only gonna bump the change log for one day modernization on this one because it's really only relevant for those folks. Not sure why and I didn't put the title at the top there. Why did I used to do that? Why past me? Why? Uh, okay. Was updated. Okay. TR stuff is outdated. Yeah, so. My intention for this was, you know, just like put a little note saying the TR stuff is outdated. Maybe even not recommend the TR plugin anymore. I don't know. Um, <laughs> now that I know that it, Zach seems to uh, think, and I fully believe him, that it's doable with 0 0.49, I just want to go that route. So you're talking like overwrite the I have vanilla multi uh, I have vanilla mark and recall I can overwrite that stuff right now I can do that because if so that's like Todd bless you <laughs> I need to know this is what I need in my life right now we'll do this one next here galaxy map overhaul no longer separate I don't know why you wouldn't want that by the way it was so beautiful Cool. Website is back. Let's just refresh this real quick. There we go. Updated. Change log. One day. Cool. Excellent.
the best bay way would be to modify the original mod. Interesting. The problem, since you can't remove magic effects, I see. Okay. And then we would just wouldn't need to rely on how the original mod has like cells hard coded in it, right? Because OpenMW Lua has, you know, a greater introspection into that. And so, awesome. Okay. Very interesting. We may yet see that today. We'll see. All right. Uh, this. Uh, and you can't play sounds without MW script yet. Yeah, I saw your hack for that too. I suppose that could work. Hopefully, Mark and Recall can be dehard coded soon, but I think that will require a sound API. Okay, interesting. Um, honestly, not having a sound would be awkward, sort of, but I could live with that for a few weeks, months, you know, while that kind of rolls out. Sound API, I don't even think anybody's working on that right now. Are they? I could make it myself if you'd like. Hey, Zach. Go for it, man. <laughs> Do it. I mean, I would love it if you did it. Please. Go, 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 go. Do it. I love you. All right, let's look at the Starwind Enhanced thing. Just a quick note here, we'll be removing a folder path, I guess. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh man, this is why I need the comments on the video. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Galaxy map overhaul. Alright, what does my thing for this look like? I need to get back to my star wind. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I would, I definitely am down to implement it, and it would be a fun exercise, but hey, as far as I'm concerned, one less thing I have to write, you know, I have plenty of other things to do, so, <laughs> yes, please, exactly, Starwind Enhanced, all right, uh, Galaxy Map, did I, okay, wow, apparently my setup is bunk too, even, did I not, let's see here. Okay. Deleted. I don't know if you guys can hear that thunder. It was pretty ominous. <laughs> Wasn't that loud, though. Very ominous, though. Wow. All right. This is going to be another one where we... <laughs> I one shook my house a little bit. Wow. If I drop off, though, you guys know what happened. Zach, I'll just base it on the original mod. Use the same effects and dialogue menu. Just less scripting. Less MW script. Awesome. That would be brilliant. I am so looking forward to that. Because, yeah, I mean... You know, we you get automatic compatibility with everything for free. Basically, doing it this way. Um, if I'm following you. Uh, I think I am. Okay, Starwind Enhanced. Star. And if you haven't played Starwind yet, not just because I do voice acting for two characters in it, but you should try it out. It's delightfully awesome. It was almost like a meme level mod at first, you know, because it was just so janky. But like Iggy and Billy also have sculpted it into something that is really fun. Uh, what, what did I just do? Got carried away here.
and by the base mod here, we mean Starwind. It's actually properly in Starwind now, so nice. That is fantastic. Didn't ever save that. So we'll do two for one here. Not caring too much about commit messages at the moment. Mm, okay. I do want to... So this, just a quick note about this, I just wrote, is note that this is not compatible with the latest TR release. And if you're not familiar with how this mod works, it does a couple of things that are janky. Um, no offense to the author at all, to Rot or, or Marcel Hasselbarth at all. No offense to them. It, these are limitations of MW script and the original engine, whereby you can't have too many. Um, there's like a limit on if, else, ifs in the original engine. Um, there may even be a script size limit in the original engine. And then also it has to know the names of every cell you could potentially end up teleporting to or from. Um, and so those things make for like kind of a spaghetti-ish make layout of the mod. You know, you have like all these five or six scripts with like hard coded cell names and like a kind of a list of what goes where. And, you know, when I made my abandoned flat teleport points mod for it I had to explore the guts of it and learn all these things and I was a little horrified like Ugh. I was still a bit of a noob in terms of the engine and how it works and that knowledge so I didn't really know what I was in store for but yeah that is like a just an interesting look at the way people did things in the face of MW script limitations all right All right, this I feel like deserves thought. So we're not gonna go into it because we are going to go into this. Uh, first though, I'm gonna make sure that tests pass and we're gonna do a deploy of the website. So let's see what we got here, okay. Just do test there. Quick breather. Well, yeah, it is dark out there now. You can barely see me. <laughs> so we left off looking at Soltha's Six House Amulet. Uh, not the only one from Soltha's that we're going to be adding, though. Some of the other ones that we looked at that were brilliant. This OAAB Hackle Low adds a variety to the Grey's Lance that kind of look like palm trees, in my opinion, and I love it. I think it works. I think they look cool. And, and some really, like, large barrel-like ones. <laughs> it's the best way I can describe them as barrels. Pickpocket Rebalance. Thank you, A-Fame. Props. Speechcraft uh, Rebalance going on there as well. Excuse me. May have to see where that falls in my own load order, actually. Yeah, okay, we didn't quite get there yet. Okay, good. I think it's time to sit down, too. Hmm? this way 
Why do these tests take forever? Is the database getting racked or what's going on here? Looks kind of like it, honestly. Postgres getting hit hard. Ooh. Another epic sounding thunder boom. <laughs> All right. Never mind that. Push that up and away. And this way too. So these changes are going up to the beta and staging versions of the website. You can all check it out once it's done, if you want. And without further ado, let's take a peek at this. All right. So yeah, six house amulet. Right, okay, next up after this, RR Mod Series, Better Ships and Boats. This one was a very fun journey into compatibility. Including even character generation was a little janktified with it. Um, I assume it's a... I didn't test it with vanilla Morrowind.exe. I should, though, because I'm morbidly curious. But the, the first guard that is standing on the ship deck before you walk off the ship, this is where they want you. Head down to the dock. That guy, he's like floating like a foot in the air because he's colliding with something awkwardly like on the ship, like one of the details that this mod adds. So I had to like move him back and to the left a little bit. And then now he's fine. But yeah, out of the box, it was like that. I got to feel like this is not something that happens in Morrowind.exe because I can't, I just can't imagine that kind of an error happening, you know. Maybe it did though. These things happened. So anyway though, um, <laughs> there were quite a few other incompatibilities with this one that I had to solve with patches. And those patches... Um, needed to be made, you know, and that's part of the reason why it took a while to add this one. But, I mean, the boats are just phenomenal looking. Patching wasn't too painful. And, um, honestly, I'm looking forward to studying Zach's Lua script to see, you know, how I can do this just with Lua in the future. Um, you didn't need to, you know... <laughs> You don't need to, like, rename any objects or anything. I mean, that's just... Having done a few of these recently, that just that concept blows my mind away, and I'm very happy about that. So, yeah, and another one that this one has uh, awkward incompatibility with is uh, Tomb of the Snow Prince, which moves the Soul Slime Island. And so you get, you know dupes of things that would normally be at the vanilla position for the landmass. Um, you know, another rel relatively easy thing to fix, but something nonetheless that I could, you could have just left it be, you know, and you, maybe people wouldn't even notice, but it's like one of those, when you see it, you cannot unsee it things for sure. For me, it was. So this one has a BCOM patch. And that makes a difference in terms of rough IDs. And also in terms of the patches that I made, which are exclusively compatible with this plugin and not the plugin that it ships with. So, um, you know, we'll note when we add it to the website that we have to use the BCOM plugin and uh, the related patches are not necessarily compatible. They're all noted in my uh, repo. Let's take a quick look. Let's take a quick look at this one. I had totally intended to move my gaming PC over here, but I just didn't get to it. But by this weekend, hopefully I will move everything over, set up OBS, set up my webcam, set up my mic and everything. And we can have less potato quality effects. I also really wanted to, um, I had my Steam Deck over here on Sunday because I wanted to like, <laughs> I don't know, like stand behind my PC and hold my Steam Deck like this. Show you guys how good it looks, because it looks really good, you know. I mean, I have the full total overhaul. 
I just turn object paging min size up a bit, you know, to reduce uh, pop it uh, to reduce distance stuff. But I mean, you don't even notice it, you know, five cells view distance. You don't notice it at all, really. Um, OK, so the very first boat you, d you show up in on is like just very spiffy here. Look at this. And the detail is great, like just the wood. Here's our guy right here that was floating with the yellow boots. And yeah, just the wood texture looks great. The design of the boats, you know, they're very boat-looky. I was a big fan. I was very surprised to see this in-game and how well I thought it fit, so. Cool mod, worth the patching. Um. And yeah, in the future, you know, Zach has paved the way for better patching through Lua. So yeah, look forward to seeing this one. All right. Looks like the deploy finished. Cool. <laughs> this is one. Uh, I can't remember the name of the user. Somebody very recently in Discord, shared this one with me, Immersive Telvani Bugmusk. And uh, they rightfully stated that it is kind of OP. It kind of is. Um, I don't know. Like, I respect being thoughtful about, uh, hey, Gonzo, welcome, my dude. I'm glad you're here, man. Uh, welcome. Yeah, we're just doing the 6.x extravaganza. We actually did a bit of a... We had a kind of a fruitful stream so far. Zach uh, is going to implement... Uh, 0 0.49 Lua Multimark. It's going to be awesome. I mean, we're so stoked. <laughs> well, yeah, we had a we had a very productive we've had a very productive stream thus far and I wanted to plant the seed in your head. I thought in the user's guide we should have like a stuff you should know section, you know, that's kind of mentally prepares people you're going to need to use command line. This is how you do stuff in the console, you know, further to some of the pr prior discussions we've had about, uh, you know, tutorial ideas. So anyway, we're not going to dive into that today, though, because I feel like it really needs a deeper, more thoughtful discussion. Sounds like a great idea. Awesome. Yeah. So so anyway, um, oh, yeah, and I did unlocksify the site load order, as you probably saw. I tagged in the review for that. Um, so anyway, going back to this. Mod edition extravaganza that we got going on here. Next up, yeah, immersive Tilvani Bug Musk. So, I don't know. I just, uh, not only is Random Pal, you know, the author of one of my favorite mods, and in my opinion, probably the single best bang for your buck mod you can get out there, which is Beautiful Cities of Morrowind, but they just have like a, a style and a, also kind of a sense of humor here, you know. Um, and also trying to do it right like uh i guess it isn't something you would drink right i always thought that was weird the bug musk you know you're gonna okay you're gonna drink that i wouldn't you know recommend drinking you know perfume or cologne in real life it would probably make you sick <laughs> so so this mod makes it like a thing you can spray and it makes it more expensive and so on i think it's a great personally i think it's a great addition as is um glazy let's just pull up discord here so i can get the name right Wow, lots of chatter with Simon Prime. Very exciting having this guy come to to chat with us. It's pretty awesome. People come out of the woodworks after all these years and they want to talk with us. You know, that's really cool. Oh, my. <laughs> wow, we had a lot of discussion yesterday. Morrowind 2, Elder Scrolls 6. I didn't know that the game of the century was already here. It is. Glazzy, there you go, Glazzy. Thank you so much for the recommend on this one. I'm just gonna, you know, Glazzy mentioned that they patched it to be a little less OP, and uh, uh, I respect that and I appreciate that. We're not gonna go that far, though. I don't think we're not gonna. I don't think that's needed necessarily. We can still have fun with this one as is, and you know, if people really like it, um, the idea of patching it that is, I totally encourage doing it. You know, and hopefully. Hopefully, eventually, we'll have the tools available on the website where we can help empower people to do that, right? Like, oh, this is my favorite mod. I want to poke it. I remember the first time I edited the abandoned flat, you know, just fire up the CS and, like, seeing what I could change. I wanted to make the uh, storage containers really, really deep, you know, um, like have a lot of capacity so I could just throw unlimited crap in there. 
And that, I think, was my first foray into the CS, like learning about objects but not really knowing what I'm doing. Bless you, by the way. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's that kind of a thing that is fun. Um, it's learning and it's fun. It's hacking on a game you love, you know. Um, it's a cool creative experience. I totally encourage that. Immersive bug musk. Uh-oh. Is my video frozen? Please let me know. Oh, yeah, okay. Could be my... My internet is not potato internet, but the infrastructure that it runs on is like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a little bit potato-y, so... If I dropped out, I wouldn't be surprised. Looks good, okay. Oof. F5, all right. Nice. Glad we didn't lose you, man. So, yeah, uh, it immersive Tavani bug must to me. It was like, yeah, putting it on. Let's add it to the mix. It fits well. It's a good, tasteful change by our friend Random Pal. So, yeah. We're doing it. Next up, uh, another one. Uh, normal maps for everything is just, as I said before, popping up here and there, everywhere in the list. 30 some odd, you know, selections from it that we're using. So, ooh, this one. Yeah. The Lonely Towers. I'm just going to go ahead and... Nexus mods... DuckDuckGo is pretty good about, yeah, figuring out my jumble there. This one's pretty cool. Goes really nice with uh, the Ban Benef. Also by Random Pal that we have on the list currently. Excuse me, rounds out the kind of like... I know a lot of people like Vert's Trees, and I respect that. I'm just not a really big fan of them, you know. Um, but I like the way these Ban Benef and this one kind of like fill out the landscape, you know, um, and it looks pretty cool. It looks really cool. Um, also looks really great with Demanufacturer's Kakarin mod, which also, like, really fills in this area a lot. So let's actually take a look at that, shall we? All right, we can do it. You can do a little, buddy. We just need a quick look anyways. Yeah, okay, so there's... Ben Benef. And then we can see... The Morrowind music clashing with my... Uh, but there, here's the... The Baklu, well, how am I pronouncing it wrong? Balaku. That's this guy right here. This is Ban Binif right here in front of us by RP. And here's the accompanying one. And yeah, just like taking a zoom out, you know, it really like makes the landscape look pretty awesome. Ah, uh, Gonzo says, I think I set up a workflow for GitLab through VS Code, by the way. So hopefully I don't have to use that awful web interface. Yeah, I hear you it's you know it's tough i have that glab command line thing that i need to like really sit down and learn how to write issues from that one yeah this looks great i love this landscape here and just it feels like they should be there you know feels like they should be there so Ooh, we're adding that one and also yeah good to hear about that gonzo awesome I assume there's like some GitLab plugin for VS Code or something lets you like work with tickets and things. That's pretty cool. I just don't know what they're thinking over there. You know, I love you. I love GitLab. Love you people that work on GitLab, but the UI has gone off the deep end a little bit. I think too much JavaScript. Cool. You can see MRs in VS Code. Nice. I have this G-Lab thing here. Uh, but yeah, my token's expired. 
minutes. So by this weekend, I'll hopefully not forget about it and dust it off. But this is really cool because, like, when the CI job is running, I can just, like, watch it here in my terminal. You know, I don't have to, like, open the web browser, which is really great, you know. Um, I don't know if it would. <laughs> I doubt it would work in Emacs. All right. So, yeah, the Lonely Towers. Normal maps popping up again. Indeed, there's some Band Benef normal maps that we're going to scoop up. This one we just added, actually. So not even part of the 6.x extravaganza anymore. Uh, this one, already on the website too. We did this one a few weeks ago. Old Bluefin Upscaled, another one from Mono Exhibitor. Just a little eye candy update. For old bluefin, the old bluefin texture looks a little awkward this way, but in game, it's great. Looks very nice. Old bluefin upscale. Here we go. Nexus makes it really hard to copy this text right here. It's like so hard to copy it. You want to talk about UIs that use too much JavaScript. Yeah, I'm going there. Another website I love, Nexus Mods, but they use way too much. <laughs> All right. Uh, more normal maps. More rain. Ooh, me oh my. It's really coming down outside. Hey, Smallio. What do you got here, Sung? Glasses? Okay. You need to zoom in? Yeah, you can't see me. It's too dark. Whoa. <laughs> that was another loud boom. The text is blurry too. Well, that just might be your connection. Our connection. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Yeah, so this is not a... So this I might actually need some input from you folks on, in particular Herdrax and Gonzo. Um, I added in Telvani Cephalopod armor to round out. So, so it is a little tricky to round out what exactly you need to properly have yet another guard diversity Cephalopod armor with all the right textures and stuff. So this one, Telvani Cephalopod Armor, was added because there were some missing textures that I noted in the log. And so we take this one, and I believe we just use the textures. Let's take a look here, Telvani Cephalopod. No, I have a, no way. Definitely have a, okay. So yeah, we get the plug in a patched plug in from BCUM. I think is what's going on here. Uh, patches twenty eight. There are actual patches instead of plug in replacers. So yeah, and yeah. Oh yeah, we're definitely uh, we're gonna be hanging out in real life with its catastrophe next week. It's going to be awesome. Looking forward to seeing you, bud. Uh, Herdrax, I've yet to find a mix missing texture for that one, even in the current iteration. Okay, that's really good feedback. I feel like I'm going to hold off on putting this one in there, and I need I don't have a good recollection of why I added this one in here, and as I'm trying to explain to you folks why I did it, I'm struggling, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> so let's just hold off on this one for a minute and try and figure out if we actually need it, what we need, um, and back out these changes if we don't need them. <laughs> Herdrax, love how our generation still defaults to real life as anything outside the internet. Yeah, wow. Okay, I guess <laughs> I guess that ages me now, doesn't it? <laughs> oh. I need a moment to reflect on that. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, okay. Where's Ultimate? Actually, this is a change that we could make on the website right now. Um, but I think I'll wait for 6.x. And basically, this line adds two more plugins to the Where's Ultimate recommendation on the website right now, which exclude changes to NPCs on Vardenfell, meaning like far, good old Fargoth is going to have the same old... Without these, Fargoth, Jube, Aril, everybody, they're going to have the same old clothes, but with this, it shuffles Vardenfell NPCs' clothes. It was not a conscious omission when I did the list. Um, it was a semi-conscious omission because... One of the pitfalls of using this is, and I'll fire up the game and maybe we can see, but some of the pants, for example, that it adds are not, you know, better clothes pants. And so they'll have like the segmented legs. Excuse me. And it will look weird with the more modern bodies that are in the total overhaul. It doesn't necessarily bother me personally. But if you're somebody for whom like that kind of inconsistency is too awkward and that's understandable... You know, you're not going to want to use this. So that's why this is a this is a a, conten a contentious addition for me in my mind. And I'm not going to I'm not going to do it just yet. I don't know. I kind of ooh, that was some lightning. Yikes. Uh I'm not going to put that on there just yet. Um Oh, cool. Even if you're going with outfit diver diversity as an addition for 6.x, it doesn't alter or conflict with yet another guard diversity. Awesome. That's good. I haven't, I've been using that one. By the way, I've been using NOD um, for the past week or so. And I mean, it, it looks great, but it also kind of ha somewhat has the same issue as this one where you it will use clothes that are not necessarily, um, or maybe it does. Where are not it, uh, or maybe this is exclusively a wears issue where we use some of the OAAB pants, for example, that have like the segmented legs. So I'm gonna hold off on adding this one for now. Um, and yeah, you can see here we have the NOD patch. Um, I'm not sure actually where NOD. Oh, here we go. Yeah, NOD outfit diversity. A little bit further down here. This is like the block of NPCs stuff. Um, and so NOD falls a little bit below there. Yeah, okay. Um, so this is mostly concerning patches and stuff. Um, the next actually big update, though, or big addition, rather, is this one, which when I first saw it, I thought, does this play well with friends and foes and uh, absolutely it does and actually it's a fine accompaniment and a really awesome implementation of kind of the concept of you know throwing NPCs to fill out the world space uh, done by the grumbling vomit who is also uh, let's see we have the interiors Morrowind interiors project same author um, which if you haven't tried this one just you know it's not total overhaul compatible yet but it lets you look out the window, actually look out the windows. Um, and just the experience of that, it, whoa, more lightning. Uh, the experience of looking out the windows and seeing stuff is pretty cool. Um, getting added, this is for sure getting added to iHeart Vanilla, for sure. Whoa. <laughs> okay, repopulated Morrowind. Let's not get too distracted by the thunder. I love this too, Gonzo. Very exciting. This update is coming together pretty well. I'm not going to lie. I'm extremely happy with what we're doing and what we got on the plate. Um, all the exciting stuff Zach is doing with 0 0.49, just leading the charge of mind-blowing stuff. Um... You know, we got 0 0.48 launching with some cool, some cool Lua stuff. A little preview of the mind-blowing stuff to come, certainly. All right. Let's see here. And yeah, so Repopulated Morrowind has quite a few options. BCOM compatibility. Um, there's a Mage's Robes compatibility patch, which, oh yeah, Mage's Robes. Another addition that's going on the list. Uh, thank you to OK High for that one. Somehow I missed MD's Mage's Robes, but that's f played with that one a little bit. Awesome. Really rounds out being in a mage's guild crony. 
you know you get those robes like they give you in Skyrim and stuff it's cool very cool love 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 it all right get a little off track here <laughs> back to the list so can you believe it we're not even like halfway through all the changes yikes <laughs> all right uh, attend me just changed the folder path I'm using the git uh, copy of the mod I had a weird issue if anybody else out there is using Linux I had a weird issue where it like unzipped strange the latest release on Nexus it gave me like the file named with the folder path I've never seen anything like that before slowed and slavers this is a great looking one Added this one in like a flurry of additions when uh, when Random Pal released, you know, Mola Gamar and just a, a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, this one's cool. You don't see, I don't think you see Slodes really in the game at all in the in the vanilla game. So this puts them in there. Merchants and Slavers. Um, I don't think this is the one that adds the airships, but we got another one coming. If it's not this one, we got another one coming that adds the airships too. And, uh, you know, Zach has already proven that the airship is a doable concept. And if you haven't tried that yet, I mean, go over to Zach's GitLab and check it out. It's, it's a, you have to experience it to believe it. Like just sitting on the, all right, I'm very tempted to have a diversion and, and fire it up right now. But just sitting on the airship while it like autopilots you somewhere is just like, oh, it's awesome. All right, we're doing it. We're doing this. <laughs> Herdrak says, I'm afraid to try Zach's airship. I need to work for a living. Me too, man. Me too. See, I'm very excited because I now have a vehicles category in my local mod collection here. Just like, ha, ha, ha. We got vehicles happening here. I know there's the, um, the Zelda motorcycle mod for MWSE, so it's not necessarily even the first... There's Abbott's rideable, rideable vehicles, you know, not even necessarily the first ever, but yeah, now it's the first here in my collection. All right. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Whoa. Three very large booms. It was thunder. <laughs> Yikes, getting a little funky out here. All right. Okay. So, you load up the mod, you pull down the console, you type Lua build airship and just like that you're on the airship now if I type let's go to Helnim and again there's just I don't know like for me personally like sitting here on the airship while it's flying me around some about this just is pretty chill and cool and just feels really great. Let's see if we can get out here on the charging board. Walk the plank. Holy Nerevar, indeed, my friend, indeed. Oh, wait, it's not going to move because I walked off the ship, maybe. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. oh, no. All right, hold on, hold on. I screwed the pooch here. It does some raycast. Here we go. Yeah, it needs me to be actually above it to work, if I'm not mistaken. And that includes the plank. Yeah, enjoy the scenery, friends. Enjoy your beverage of choice. I got a tangerine LaCroix right here. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's the life right there. This, but with silt striders or pirate ships, anything on land is a bit more tricky, though, because you have the proposition of collisions. Zach can probably speak to that, um, having dealt with the air version of this problem space. But yeah, you got the whole issue of collisions. That's why Abbott's stuff never really worked well with OpenMW. We got our whole collision 
implementation that's unique. Physics. Cool though, huh? Pretty cool. Check out his GitLab. Download a copy of it. You need a 0.49 dev build. But the drivable airship, uh, well, we just flew through the mountain here. <laughs> oh my god, that was awesome. I'm not even mad. Yeah, pull up. I'm not even mad. Oh, I hope Zach saw that. That was awesome. <laughs> Otherwise, what what time duration are we at here? We're at hour 25 minutes. <laughs> that was too funny. Not even mad. So it, I can... Um, I forget what the key is to get the help. I can manually drive this thing. May need to be a bit higher. Yeah, I think so. For your... This is the Helnim route. I'm in the balloon now. Yep, it's fine. This is fine. Nothing could get me here. Uh, oh, yeah, so we're going to Helnim, and I don't actually have Helnim. <laughs> we don't have, actually have TR here, so we're just going for a walk in the park, I guess. Anyway, thank you for... Yeah, this is uh, amazing, Zach. Well done. I just... Everybody, you know, let's let's clap. I mean, this is just awesome. I got distracted by this idea because we were looking at the Sloads, 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 and these guys got an airship. Sloetic Transports. That's the next one in the list. Let's put this one on here first, though. Really, uh, it's... It's further to the theme of repopulated Morrowind, right? We're, like, putting more stuff out there. Stuff that the game itself talks about but is, like, mysteriously absent. Plus some, like, really cool-looking armor. I mean, wow. I will say, that's pretty good. Yeah, these are awesome. That's almost too awesome. And then, yeah, these are the guys right there. <clears throat> Which, uh, shameless plug, I voiced one of these guys in Billy Fighter's Investigations at Telluris mod. And uh, that was an interesting experience, trying to give a voice to one of these guys. I don't know if I succeeded or not. All right, yeah, so that's the... And there is a, so there is a BCOM patch for this one. Slow it in slavers. And we'll use the plugin out of that one. Sloetic transports. Yeah, this is the one with the slowed airships. So, you know, once we get Dwemer airships perfected, and, and I feel like the first thing I thought of was that needs a quest. That needs, like, a mountain base that you can only get to from the airship. You know, that's actually okay. High's idea. Um, and, and, you know, why not have slowed airships, too? Why not? So this actually puts them in the game. Obviously, you can't fly them, but... Uh, you know, puts them over there by Mulligmar. They look awesome. And it just kind of fits, you know, fleshes out their presence. Maybe a continuation of the crashed Dwemer airship. Exactly, Gonzo. That's exactly, I was thinking something like that, you know. So it's step one is getting into the game and, and fine-tuning the, you know, the physics of it. And then step two would be, yeah, just add some kind of a quest. And then it'd be perfect. And, yeah, the possibilities for other vehicles. You know, pirate ship. Jet ski. I personally wouldn't mind like a Dwemer jet ski mod. That's about as lore friendly as a lawnmower, which I do plan on doing. Shoot, like, <laughs> I wonder if we can use like the Lua stuff to disable statics. Can we use that to disable ground cover? Because if we can, my lawnmower mod is doable today. All right. <laughs> so this is the big one right here. NPC outfit diversity. NOD. It's apparent uh, apparently been out for a minute. I didn't know about it until about a week or so ago. But it's just... I actually have to use the restroom, but I'm going to leave you here at this image. And yeah, just the clothes that it adds... <laughs> Gonzo, as you're a lady of lawn and dusk. Yeah, you feel me, man. <laughs> I don't know. It's lore friendly. I'm saying it. But yeah, just I'll leave you with this picture. I will be right back. Talk amongst yourselves about outfit diversity, eh?
And I'm back. And a Fane's comment. The robe guy exists two times. Not diverse enough. Ah, that's funny. I see it too. There's actually, it looks like a few of them. Nonetheless, though, this is some good stuff uh, when you see it in game. Uh, what's her name? Alone, I think. Who's like the rogue in the Satanine uh, trade house. Just her outfit's awesome. Let's go and check it out, shall we? We'll check it out. So yeah, by this weekend, I hope to have chat overlay on the video, gaming PC set up for recording and everything. I got to dig out my webcam. It's the main blocker there. Um, and yeah, we can continue this with a little bit more playtime too. Um, good times, good times, yeah. And still debating getting a new graphics card, but I don't know. I definitely don't need a new processor. I don't need more RAM. I'm not, you know. Graphics cards are stressful to shop for, though, in my opinion. All right. Let's potato it into the trade house. Oof. Oof, here we go. Yeah, we're still on the potato, Gonzo. Yeah, yeah I forgot. Uh, I mentioned before you got on. But uh, I got, like, part of the way there to getting the potato set up in my office. Cleaned my desk, dusted it off, um, and organized the cables with the, potato with the gaming PC a little bit more. But I didn't actually get enough done to get it in here. All right, here's what I'm talking about. Alone. Hey, talk to me. This outfit is pretty good. Um, and we can't hear her speak, but yeah. So, I mean, and you'll note the clothes on these people over there, and it's just, it goes awesome like this, plus wears. It's just awesome new outfits for everyone. I mean, I'm sure you noticed Aril himself down here. Oh, my God, where did he go? Look at the orange. There we go. I mean, that's a pretty spiffy shirt he's got on. If I can just get up to the... Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah, there we go. Look at that shirt. I mean, that's pretty good. Um, I appreciate mods like this because the quality of the content is so high. There's so much of it and it's so good. So this is an easy ad. It just has some com compatibility concerns. So we're going to need to note, um, there was a, for example, there is a wares patch for this one. Right, a fan says, I like that the style is very vanilla, but still very detailed. Exactly, and um, that's a, that's exactly what I like about OAAB stuff, too. You know, and this seems, like, really in line. Like, we're fortunate enough as a community to have content like that that's, like, a natural, organic extension to the base game, you know. This, uh, by the way, this Skywind Nerevar Rising is excellent, but, man, there's, like, uh, two minutes in, it gets really intense, like we're fighting the orcs or something. <laughs> like just doesn't fit with Nerevar Rising, I don't think. It's a great song. I love it. But yeah, all of a sudden I feel like I'm in the middle of the battlefield. What happened? NOD. All right, so let's put this one on the list. And so by this weekend, I would like to uh, probably uh, before Saturday's stream, I'll start transposing this into an uh, issue on GitLab. And we'll start working on this via GitLab. Um, there's just a bunch of other stuff that had my attention and so I didn't. I wanted to put this on GitLab before today's stream, but uh, Hordrak says faction robes are awesome as well and not. Oh, awesome. Cool. That's good feedback. You know, I haven't actually gotten far enough into like a serious playthrough with it, you know, to having just added it. So I didn't really notice that yet. That's great feedback. That's exciting. That's very exciting. All right. Just awesome stylistic content that fits well with the base game. You know, it just fits like a... Ah, Herdrak says, Nod plus Wesley's Prim and Proper. Sexy. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll definitely get there. Um, I still have to devote some time to look at your issue that you filed and all your research. Thank you again for that, my man. Um, but we'll get there. I have a feeling that's going to be... It's not currently in my setup, but before we, you know, launch 6.x, that's going to be in there too. I have a feeling... I don't see why it wouldn't be. I just didn't get to it yet here.
All right. Ah, uh, yeah, Django's dialogue. And uh, Herdrax pointed me to this one. Thank you for that. Um... I feel like I used this one long ago. Certainly haven't used it since the relaunch of it, you know, 2019. Um, let's see. Dangos. Don't even have it on here. I want to say I used it long, long ago, but it must have been just before I even had this website going. So, in any case, it's a pretty fitting addition to the setup, you know, that's already greatly extending dialogue. Um, a very nice fit. So we're putting that in there. Ooh, it's getting really dark. Sorry, you folks can't see me too good. But if I turn on my light, I don't know if that's better or not, or if that's worse. Probably worse. We're working in the dark. Herdrax, unfortunately, 0 0.49 dialogue issues still pending. Hopefully it gets sorted soon. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, good find on that too, by the way. It's basically getting fixed because you found it, so props. Um, and welcome to the life of using dev builds. <laughs> you know, when we have a release happening like 0 0.48, they stop making changes to the engine that can potentially cause issues like this, you know, and they focus exclusively just on fixing problems. But when they have a new release to work with like 0 0.49 you know risky changes are on the table and get merged all the time and things break and that's just how we move forward you know um so yeah i also am looking forward to that uh resolution of that issue for sure <laughs> Herdrax says I felt like a janitor stumbling upon a loose wire while I was cleaning the office and now the building engineers are arguing about where does it originate yeah yeah uh, yeah, it's, as I told you before, it's basically normal programmer code review banter, and it's part of the process. So again, you know, welcome to using dev builds and stuff. And yeah, you've basically found your first bug and contributed to solving it. So right on. Welcome. All right. And so, oh yeah, Alvazir has a patch for this, of course. Um, I'm not going to put it separately, but I'm going to note right here, there's a, uh, patch for purists. Django's dialogue compatibility patch that we're going to want to add to the mix here. All right. Aha. Yeah, we looked at this one the other day. Oh. This one had the hilarious description. Uh... Royal Baron's Aya, which I think this right here, this is the, I'm going to recommend option number three when we put it on the website. It's the one I'm using. Excuse me. And I mean, it just, this, you know, this is more like, oh yeah, she's a queen, of course. <laughs> Zach says, remember when skill level up message were made of random special characters for a few days? Unfortunately, no, I think I missed that one. But, uh, you know, for many years, I was a like compile master kind of a guy like get ready to even when I was doing like a serious playthrough I'd be like on the couch ready to play and be like okay well let's let's build master real quick let's get the newest features and the newest bugs and that's just how I roll um, but it's not my first rodeo you know I've done several bisects I've you know just how we make OpenMW better. We use it, and we find the problems, and we get slightly annoyed, maybe, but in the end, everybody's better off. And yeah, just a quick recap here, too. This is the default. It just pfft, looking like an idiot, indeed. Big oof there. Just looks like a... This is a bit real, like a pretty standard robe too as I recall I don't remember the exact ID of it but this is not even like a really a fancy one you know not a unique one even so well done random pal thank you again alright and yeah so that rounds out the 
the NPCs changes, something I wanted to discuss with you guys. Thinking about adding a companion section to the mod lists. Um, and I checked out, to start, I checked out this one. Um, naturally, being a Danae mod, you know, I was like, oh, this is the first one I want to add. 44 NPC companions, 21 creature companions, quests that connects them. I mean, sounds pretty amazing. This one in particular, though, makes a lot of changes to dialogue. Um, like, big time. I'm sure for people who really like companions, though, it's just amazing. But I feel like it changes so much with all that stuff that it's like pretty significant change to total overhaul. I'm not going to add this one in, but I must say it was pretty awesome like to make Fargoth so happy that he was giving me a kiss <laughs> within a few minutes of starting. Overarching dialogue changes. Yeah, yeah. Herdrax, you're very familiar with di the intricacies of dialogue. I'm not going to say this is quite overarching, but it's certainly like there's a lot going on here. In order for it to do what it does, right, for you to interact deeply with your companion, you know, like make friends with Fargoth on the level. I'm, we're going to be giving each other kisses, you know. Um, certainly cool for role playing if that's your thing. But I think it's kind of uh, until we make like a role play list or like a survival list that is focused on these kinds of things. This one is not going to make it onto the list, but uh, maybe we could put something like Jalan. And the 3.0 beta, you know, that's a really popular one. Um, currently on the list, on the website in general. The only companion mod I have, I think. Yeah, is the Corgi companion by MD. <laughs> Which I just added because I like Corgis. I thought, they were, I thought it was cool. So, yeah. <laughs> total overhaul overhaul list <laughs> that's what we're doing really uh herdrak says danae's plans for npcs interacting with each other having multiple paths for their relationships is awesome though agreed 100 percent. my mind was blown actually when i realized the sheer scope of what she had done with that mod you know and i'm not like trying to trash on it at all um <laughs> totally total overhaul i feel like we need like a 1980s motif somebody with art skills please make that happen uh, nonetheless, though, yeah, friends and friends, awesome as it looks. It's a little bit, I'm not a guy who, maybe it's because I remember the battle days of bad pathfinding and companions basically having the number one skill of running in front of you when you're trying to attack the enemy, which persists even through the Fallout games for me. And I just don't like using companions, but um, if you like companions, this is probably a Todd send, honestly. It just sounds amazing. Gonzo, would you want that hypothetical RP list to be closer to vanilla expanded survival type mods or would it be closer to total overhaul? Yeah, that's a great question. So from from in my opinion, and let's just take a sp step back and think about that. Um, in my opinion, such a list could have two variants, kind of like total overhaul in my opinion has two variants. You have expanded vanilla, which is basically total overhaul minus all the graphics stuff. You could do the same thing with this, right? You could have like a like an expanded vanilla kind of setup that that's you know ignores the graphical replacers and goes strictly for the gameplay setup, and then you could maybe also on top of that have like a graphical uh, graphically enhanced version of it. Could go either, why not have both? Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, and anyway, yeah, food for thought about companions though, and also of a role play slash survival. <clears throat> um, there was also talk on Discord yesterday of having a shit posting mod list which I am totally in favor of. I mean, you know, why not? <laughs> so, okay, moving on. White Saran MD edition. So we're going to need this one to use uh, Beautiful Cities of Morrowind with MD's Temple Master mod. Some testing is going to be needed here, though, to make sure that we've got the right combination of things. When I go in game, everything looks good, but I haven't done the quest yet, so maybe there's like some statics that are spawned or something. I don't see them flying in, so probably not. But in any case, this was previously on the mod lists prior to using BCOM. And uh, so we'll just add it back for the data and we'll skip the plugins. Oh, okay. Uh, on the topics of companions, though, the Rishajit is very cool. Also by Nene. Okay, cool. I'm going to pull that one up. I'm sure I said that wrong, too. Huh. 
huh, this looks like it could... Oh, this is a very new one, too, even. So this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Um, because it's not only a companion, but it looks like we've got, like, some, you know, undoubtedly very well-thought-out quests, right? Danae has amazing writing, uh, in my experience. I've loved everything she put out. So I feel like getting a companion with quests, you know, that are well thought out. I love the kitty here. That's really great. <laughs> that face. Voiceovering, awesome, cool. That's great feedback. Jalan, of course, 3.0 beta around, working really well for uh, her Drex. That's great to hear. Awesome. Very, very good. So I think um, we need to, first off, we need to flesh out the companions category and then maybe decide what's appropriate to include in the list. But certainly this is good. This looks really good. Final Dungeon by Seeloff. Ho! Oh, that alone has me wanting to install this, you know. Tiny Dungeon by me. Me being Danae. And that's pretty awesome. There we got, you know, the cousin of the Lord Sauron here, apparently. Cool. Okay. Wow. So, yeah, definitely lots of fodder for the companion section, the theoretical companion section. I'm glad that you guys are a bit more knowledgeable than I am on this because, yeah, like I said, I avoid companions. I don't use companions. I use them in New Vegas, but in New Vegas, there's less of a chance, except for Veronica, who, of course, practices the time and tried tradition of running in front of me when I'm trying to shoot somebody. Everybody else, Boone stays back, you know, Cass stays back. They don't get shot by me. <laughs> Uh, anyway, going off the deep end here. Way off the deep end. I believe we talked about this last weekend. The Waterworks changes for Balmoral Waterworks integration into BCOM. Something I avoided checking out just because it was a little more work on top of setting up BCOM and just, you know, the stack of things I got to do is always unending. Uh, so this didn't actually get set up as part of my initial introduction of BCOM into the website. Which is unfortunate because it looks so glorious. Anyways, uh, props to Herdrax for pointing me to this. And it's on the website now. Or it's on the plan, rather. Um, not specifically going to get put on the list here because we already got it. It's just going to be an option that we set up. Uh, and we'll be reviewing this diff again as we go through it. Uh, implementing everything. So, yeah, moving on. There's definitely some more options for BCOM2. Ghost Fence Pillars. I think we may have actually added these to the website uh, previously. I'm not going to check it right now, but I think we did. Project Atlas Glow in the Dark patches for the RR statues, which Random Pal split out. Um, normal maps for everything, including BCOM. Fold that up. Kind of getting close to time here, but I think we covered a good amount of extra stuff today. Here we go, another one from Mono. Our friend Mono Exhibitor, who comes to us previously from doing Fallout stuff. And they've done some cool work here, smoothing out the rough edges. A fellow patch lover. Ooh, and speaking of patches, I did want to mention one thing before we end it today, too. Um, and I talked to uh, Gonzo and Herdrex about this offline, but I want to run this by all of you because we have a bit of a we have a conflict, and I want some input about how to resolve it. All right, Telvani Mesh Improvement Architectura Patch. This one right here. We got to do some gymnastics to copy this. There we go. So, about that conflict, we have a problem with beautiful cities of Morrowind and mines and caverns. I'll try to sh I'll try to show you. I have already patched mine, but I can unpatch it. Uh, and and Herdrex and Gonzo probably already know what I'm getting at here. Uh, but essentially, in the town of Nisus, there is a cave which gets moved by BCOM. And Mines and Caverns tries to unmove it and fails. And it puts us in a kind of a bad situation. Things look really bad. 
So I'm just going to run it real quick and we can look at it. Herdrak says, so far is only one door. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. We'll get there in just a second. Um, and so in order to see it, all you have to do, me, sis, all you have to do is fire up BCOM and Mines and Caverns together. COC to Nisus, and it's literally right there, right in front of you. You cannot miss it. So what happens is Mines and Caverns does a brilliant edit to this cave, Asarnud. Asarnud. I mean, it's beautiful, just like all the other work for Mines and Caverns, obviously. Uh, just totally beautiful. But on a quick inspection, it didn't seem like so much of a trivial edit. Um, at least I wasn't prepared to jump into the CS and figure everything out. But basically we have, yeah, so, oh my, oh me, oh my, here we go. So you have this door. This is the door that Mines and Caverns uh, tries to remove and put it somewhere else in the original location. And when you go in here, it takes you to the Mines and Caverns cell, which uh, is, you know, quite a bit different from the vanilla one. Ooh, and if this is disorienting for you, I feel you, trust me. <laughs> but basically, we have the problem now of deciding... Um, how to fix this um, mystery door? Yeah, so I fixed it. <laughs> Herdrak says that one I think can be squashed on the fly by Ashlander Architect when it's ready. Almost certainly, but I do want a proper fix for this, and I think a proper something that we can load up in our load order, right? Um, and certainly the hacking approach sounds fun in and of its own right. But to have like a proper fix that would that would undo the exterior changes. Um, that Mines and Caverns tries to reintroduce but preserve the, the actual cave changes and then hopefully it also doesn't conflict with anything else BCOM wants to do. So, <clears throat> excuse me. For now, um, I have solved this like this. Uh, just... And just, this is a, this is a, you know, oh, you can't really see it. Let me zoom out. Just using TS3 command to nuke the changes from Mines and Caverns. So essentially we're losing Mines and Caverns edits to Asernud, which is suboptimal. Um, I would hope that by the time we launch 6.x we can have like a maybe a better fix for this, but I, do, I don't have time to do it anytime soon. So anyway, just want to throw that out there and... Let you know this is this is something I found the other day when I was trying to test something unrelated. I added uh, Mamea Awakened back into the mix at the recommendation of Herdrax. Thank you for that. Um, Herdrax says, "How about just adding the wooden mine structure that usually goes around the mine doors?" That's one thing you'd have to do. But if you look at the other, so we can actually go check this out. Hopefully, if it's not too much of a potato. But Mines and Caverns tries to re-add the door somewhere else. So you, we would we would essentially need to. We would need to move the door from where Mines and Caverns tries to replace it, but then we'll also need to fix the spawn point inside the cavern. Uh, so potentially three or more things that need to be fixed for this. Not impossible, not even really that hard. Just we'll take some focus and concentration, right, to make sure we get everything done properly. So yeah, I'll show you. I'll fly over and show you roughly whereabouts I noticed it. But on the other side of town here, Oh boy, there we go. There we go. On the other side of town here. I barely noticed this. Where is it? Is this it? It's partially submerged in the ground. It's hard to notice. Uh, of course I can't find it now. Oh, right. But I found it by actually going in the place. So maybe we can do that. Let me go in this busted door. Bear with me here. So yeah, though, to answer your question, Herdrax, wherever this thing is, you could just drag it over here, fix the alignment right, and then this spawn point is busted and just places me wherever, you know, so we would need to find the... wherever this one is in here. Let 
There we go. Does this take me outside? Yeah. Okay, here it is. Boom. And where the heck is this? Okay. I was wrong about being on it being on the other side of town. It's on the same side of town, just yeah, around the corner from where our our the busted door is right there. You can see right by my cursor right there. And the one that Mines and Caverns tries to replace, this is, I guess, the vanilla location relative. Given the, uh, Herdrex says, given the amount of mods Randapel covers on BCOM, I'm surprised he hasn't patched Mines and Caverns. Yeah. Um, well, hey, maybe we can, you know, do him a solid and we can contribute to the patch collection. I fixed a couple bugs in the NPC schedules uh, patch that he has. So this would be it right here, though. So you would want, basically want to move this, I assume. And I'm going to guess there's no door here. Yeah, no door, just the frame. Ah. Yeah, no door, just the frame. So you would move this frame back to where the door was, and then you would need to fix the spawn point of the door. Should be a simple fix. Famous last words. But there you have it. So um, I would like to, you know, maybe we'll put our heads together and we'll get this done at some point in the coming weeks. But yeah, rather than nuke the changes out of uh, Mines and Caverns, we would like to have this. Contributed upstream to Random Pal so everybody else can enjoy it too. Um, that would be the ideal path forward. So, yeah, Mines and Caverns. We're going to put this one on here. It's already on the website. Used to be on the lists back in the day. I believe I removed it from the list when I added BCOM because of things like this. And I wasn't quite uh, as willing or able to, for that matter, to, uh, to make patches. Um, now it's like, no big deal. Let's do it, right? We can make patches. We can automate it with Lua, even. Mines and caverns. Yeah, this is just... Psh, brilliant design. It's the interiors on this one. Oh, you know, and Gonzo, there was that one cave. If you can think of ever think of that cave, there was one interior in here... That is in vanilla, out of the box, has like some bunk texture. We definitely talked about it on Discord. Um, I am curious if it happens in Morrowind.exe. I want to say we tried it, and it does, and it's just simply a, a bugged texture with this one. But that's an issue we should note and, and try to fix if we can. Texture stuff, I'm a little sheepish to try because I can't just hack my way through it. you got to actually like have good painting skills and whatever. And if you saw my Curb Your Death picture, you'd know about my horrible Kreta skills. <laughs> All right. Uh, looks like it's about that time. Let's see what else we got here. Make sure this works. Okay, yeah, Aldscar Ultra HD. This is a really complicated one because the, the Atlas for Scar and Aldrune is really complicated. I'm probably just going to end up dropping that one. Um, Necrom HQ normal maps for Morrowind. That'll be that's really great. Necrom beautiful, beautiful city. Better flames for concept art. Nisintu, thank you, Gonzo. Let's go take a look at that right now. Nisintu, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the total overhaul look at it, but uh, it actually looks like this with just vanilla mines and caverns too. I verified. Nisintu. And there's just some awkward thing happening here with the textures. Could be OpenMW problem, though. I'm curious. I'm not quite motivated enough to fire it up with Morrowind.exe, but somebody who is should. And let me know, please. Okay. Let's, uh, oops. Excuse me. Good find, Gonzo. Thank you. Yeah, here we go. Woof. What's going on here? Yeah, it's an iceberg. That's what it is. It's an iceberg. We figured it out. It's not a bug. It's an iceberg. So, yeah, I wonder if it does this in Morrowind.exe. Um, it's weird to see the ambient occlusion being painted on there. It's even weirder in the CS, huh? <laughs> oh, interesting. In what way? Hmm... 
I'm sort of tempted. All right, let's do it. Let's look at it in the CS. Install. Texture pop in and out of existence. Wow. Oh, okay. I want to say I saw that before. Oh, the poor CS chugging under the weight of the total overhaul list. Ooh, here we go. Well, <laughs> it's just loading. It's doing something. There we go. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, more loading. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Not sure if you folks can hear that. It's still going. It's like a 10 second loud thunder boom. 10 second long. Loud. Oh man, I really want to see this. Here we go. Mines and caverns. Okay, listen to. Whoa, bizarre. <laughs> Not sure what's happening here. Weird. Is there anything in the log? I don't know if that's related. Bizarre. So yeah, I would expect it probably looks like this in vanilla, right? And then OpenMW is just losing it. Well, if one of you doesn't do this in vanilla Morrowind later today, I think I feel like we should and file a bug. This should get reported and fixed. Because it's a cry and shame. Come on, there we go. Why, though? How weird. Oh, that's enough toddly mystery for me today, I think. <laughs> Let's go back up to the list and see how we did today. All right. Uh, lineup assembly. We had a discussion about this. I'm marking it as done, and we got two 100%s in a row, folks. Heck yeah. Hudrak says, for Asernud, I found a faster solution for total overhaul that doesn't require nuking the change dungeon, actually. We can talk about it on Discord. Cool. Yeah, all right. Um, stream's wrapping up. So, yeah, let's definitely talk about that on Discord. Uh, and uh, thank you again to everybody for hopping on with me. And uh, we got another 100% day. We're going to have probably another 100% day on Saturday and going forward. Um, we have, if we just take a really quick look here at our 6.x lineup, I mean, wow, you know, this is a good, this is a very good list. We've got like 60, you know, 50, 40 mods here. I mean, this is a good amount of stuff, not mentioning additional changes, normal maps. I'm really happy with this. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining me for today's shotgun stream, everybody. I'm so glad that you're with me and uh, we'll see you on the weekend and happy modding to everybody. Cheers. Take care.